What's up you guys, Angelo, back with another Mad Detail. So today we're going to be working on one of my all-time favorite trucks, which is the Chevy 2002 Stepside Single Cab. Um, so a pleasure to be working on this thing today and get it all restored and looking nice and pretty again. But as you guys can see, just take a look around all the paintwork. It's got tons of swirl marks, um, a lot of built-up brake dust all over the wheels and tires, tons of road tar on the body, and a lot of dog hair on the interior that's hidden. You can't actually see it, but as you guys have seen some later clips when we start vacuuming these things, there's piles of dog hair in here. So if you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, make sure and hit the subscribe button. Turn your guys' notification bell on right now so you don't miss out on any future mad details. And if you guys can, just please smash that like button. So we could send this video out to everybody and we could make this channel grow together. So enjoy the video. So here I'm going to take my chemical sprayer filled up with super clean, non-diluted, and I'm just going to soak the wheel tires and wheel wells, then take a stiff bristle brush to the wheel well and get all the mud busted up and get it loosened up to get it all sprayed away with the pressure washer. So before jumping straight to super clean and acid, I wanted to try the Meguiar's non-acid wheel and tire cleaner uh, to get these white letters revealed. And if you guys didn't know this, you guys will see in a few seconds, those are actually white letter tires. They were actually that dirty. But um, as you guys will see, I didn't get the best result and the whitest white letters from that uh, cleaner so I went ahead and switched to my super clean uh, full strength and a uh, acid based wool cleaner to get them all nice and clean. So a lot of times I get asked what kind of degreaser I use. So this is super clean. This is what I use. Uh, to me, it's one of the best degreasers you can get for the money. And at full strength, it does an awesome job. It is dilutable, but when it comes to really dirty tires and wheel wells, I like to use it straight. That's just personal preference. It takes less time to me and you get a better result. You know, it's totally up to you and what you can afford to spend or how much time you really want to put into it. I like to get let the product work for me and get things done a little quicker. Um, and then here I'm just using some acid based wheel cleaner as well on the wheels and it did a lot better job than just the Meguiar's, um, you know, non acid wheel and tire cleaner. So before even thinking about taking a mitt to this paint and washing it, I wanted to go ahead and take my chemical sprayer with some super clean diluted 5 to 1 and I'm going to pre-soak or pre-treat the body to loosen up all the built up brake dust and dirt that's been sitting on this truck for years. Also I'm going to be doing this to soften up any kind of really stuck on road tar and brake dust to loosen up before getting all clay washed. So here I'm going to be letting the pressure washer do the heavy lifting and get all the deep embedded dirt and contaminants off this paint before getting it all washed.
the pressure washer, I went ahead and refilmed the paint, took my clay bar to it to get any surface bonding contaminants, any road tar or brake dust that's left over on this paint. So after getting the paint all clayed and washed and dried, I went ahead and took off this nasty bumper and replaced it with a totally new one. So stay tuned for that and you guys will see the result, it looks a hundred times better. So to start off the interior detail, just going to pull out the floor mats, any personal items or junk or trash, throw it all away and get some room in here so we get the seats pulled out. Okay, so here we're just going to get some of the debris out of the way with the vacuum. Um, you guys probably can't see here, but there is a ton of dog hair, believe it or not, on this carpet. But it is such a light color dog hair. It's like a silver color. It actually blends into the carpet. So we will revisit it with the toner door and uh, some pet hair brushes later on in the video. So you guys can see I spend an abnormal amount of time vacuuming this chair and that was purely on purpose. I want to show you guys the power of a toner door. So that was after being thoroughly vacuumed, you can look really closely and see all the dirt and sand and dust bouncing off the surface out of the foam and getting vacuumed away with the toner door. This tool, I highly, highly recommend it. There'll be a link in the description down below. This is not sponsored in any way. They probably don't even know who I am, but I really do enjoy using this tool because it does get out about an extra 90% of dirt and debris out of carpet fibers and seats. So since these seat belts were so nasty, I decided to use some of my carpet solution alongside a little bit of all-purpose cleaner and then my McCulloch steamer and get them all drill brushed, scrubbed, and then get them all extracted to make them look nice and clean again. So 
So here I'm just going to take my pump sprayer along with some carpet solution. Um, I'm just going to saturate the seat. Then take a drill brush to it, get everything agitated, get all the dirt to the surface, and get it all extracted until the water comes out crystal clear. So a little tip I want to share with you guys, anytime you're extracting seats, you want to make sure you're really compressed on that foam, press down as hard as possible to make sure you really get all the stain that's actually not only in the fabric itself but in the foam risen to the surface and extract it out. So always remember to press hard down on the surface, put some pressure down, really rinse out that stain so it doesn't come back later on.
So now that we've got the seats pulled out and extracted, before moving on to extracting the carpet, I'm going to go ahead and clean all the panels and work my way from top to bottom. So the reason I didn't actually do the headliner first is because on this truck I'm not going to be doing the headliner. Um, on these older Chevys, unless you really have to do the headliner if it's in really bad shape, which this one was not, it was actually very clean. Um, I recommend not doing them unless you necessarily have to. Um, it's just a big risk on them sagging, which they always do. So I highly recommend not to do it unless it really needs to be done. But to get this detail done on the interior and all the panels, I'm going to go ahead and take my all-purpose cleaner, dilute 5 to 1, along with a variety of different brushes. Here I'm using a detail brush and some compressed air and some microfiber towels to get it all wiped away and look nice and fresh. Okay, so moving back on to the extraction process, so here I'm just using my carpet solution along with a white drill brush to get the carpet all agitated and get all that dirt lifted to the surface and get it all extracted. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, please go ahead and smash that like button. And if you're already not subscribed to the channel, welcome. Um, if you guys enjoy videos like this, make sure and subscribe to the channel and turn on the little notification bell so you guys don't miss out on any of my future videos as there'll be more disaster details and barn find details coming up very shortly. So stay tuned for that. So make sure before you head out, hit that subscribe button and make sure and like the video.
As for the carpeted floor mats here, I'm just going to hit them up with the toner, get them vacuumed real quick. Then I'm going to soak them in my carpet solution, get them all agitated with the drill brush, and then hit them up with the power washer to make sure they come out 100% completely clean. As for a top coat, I'm going to be using some 303 Aerospace Protectant and to apply it, I'm going to be using a foam applicator pad. This will do a great job at reflecting some UV rays and get all the plastic looking nice and restored. Give it that nice, supple, deep, rich finish. So after applying 3 z to the entire interior, I'm going to go ahead and take a new microfiber towel and make sure and wipe off any access product to make sure there's no streaks or any access material that will make it shiny and get it to a nice matte finish. Moving on to the paint polishing process, here we're going to be using my Rupes 21mm Mark II along with a medium cut pad and some Meguiar ZA correction compound. So a little disclaimer real quick before you guys go straight to comments. By no means it's a full paint correction, this isn't the best compound in the world, but it does do a really good job at getting about 70-80% to 80 of defects out um, as quickly as possible without leaving a lot of buffer trails behind and a lot of holograms and could easily finish out with any polish. So this does a great job of just getting the paint looking nice and presentable and giving this color a nice pop.
As for the second step of this paint polishing process, here we're going to be using some finishing wax by Meguiar's. This is a two-step system. This is the following uh, step you're supposed to use after the correction compound. Now, I know it actually says wax, but this is the system they make, and it does work pretty well. As you guys see, the before and after results are pretty significant. So to get these white letters brightened up, I'm going to be using some 600 grit sandpaper along with some black magic bleach white tire cleaner and my McCulloch steamer um, with a bunch of different attachments. And basically what I'm going to do is spray this down with the uh, black magic tire cleaner and then get it most of that yellowing sanded off with the sandpaper. And this took about close to 40 minutes a tire. Um, I did cut out a lot of scenes, but it took a very long time. But these white letters was very stubborn and was very yellow as they probably haven't been cleaned um, in a very, very, very long time. So if you have white letter tires, do not let them get this bad as you'll have to go to extreme measure to get them looking nice and white again. As for this old faded beat up tonu cover, I'm going to be using some Auto Magic's black vinyl coating. Um, it's kind of hard to see the label because I spilled some on it. But And I'm using a foam applicator pad. I'm just going to rub this into surface, give it a couple of coats, let it dry for a little bit, and then just go over the spots that's needed. But as you guys can see, it's a really nice before and after result. And this thing looked almost new again after it was done. You guys will see in the later clips the before and after results. So as for this old trim, I'm going to be using some 303 Aerospace Protectant along with a foam applicator pad and just apply it to all the textured trim surfaces to make sure and restore some nice color back to all this trim and get it protected from any future UV rays. So as for the final inspection, I'm going to be using a Meguiar's Ultimate Quick Wax and a couple of microfiber towels to ensure there's no streaks or dust left over from any of the wax or compound we used earlier and excess uh, 303 aerospace that might have smudged on the paint when applying it to the trim. And here I'm just using some invisible glass glass cleaner along with a couple of microfiber towels. And then always make sure when you guys wipe down windows, always roll it down, get to the top half of the window, put it back up, and then clean the rest of the window. But here, just like spray wax, I use one to mop up all the heavy product and then the second towel to make sure it's 100% streak free. So as for tires, I'm going to be dressing them with some Meguiar's hyper dressing and a foam applicator pad. And here I'm just going to spray it on and any access product that gets onto the rim, I'll just wipe off with a microfiber towel later on.
okay guys just about to approach the end of the video thank you guys so much for sticking around if you guys are new to the channel if you're not subscribed already make sure before you head out hit that subscribe button and if you guys enjoy the video smash that like button as there'll be more future videos and don't forget to turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on anything in the future so i will see you guys in the next one